Hello guys, time for our monthly tradition on this channel, tips and tricks, which I collect from Twitter for the past month. And today for the month of October, I have nine tips for you. So we'll talk about Eloquent, new features in Laravel, hashing passwords, and much more. Let's dive in. The first tip comes from Martin, and this is more like a recommendation or reminder of a package, which can help you to sort, filter, and add relationships instead of adding eloquent queries. This is kind of more elegant syntax if you prefer this syntax. This is optional, but look at this beauty. So you write this syntax, here's the zoomed in version, and then that package Laravel Query Builder will parse your get request and transform this to actual SQL queries. So yeah, kind of a quick reminder, and we will see Martin later in this video as well. He became much more active with Twitter tips, sometimes retweeting his old tips and tricks. So I do recommend to follow him on Twitter if you don't yet. The next tip comes from Liam, who is also pretty active on Twitter, sharing tips and tricks about PHP and Laravel. So you know the function sleep of PHP. But did you know that Laravel has its own facade sleep 4, which allows you to have more readable syntax like sleep for seconds because if you use that in PHP you have like sleep 2 in parameters and that 2 is what second or millisecond this is not perfectly clear so this is clear for readability and also you can use something like that in tests to even test the sleeping process so to speak so quick tip by Liam the next tip comes from myself and this is about eloquent so did you know that you can use with or with count with condition like this so in this case user has many metrics then you assign login count as the result of that sub query which would have name as condition and then as usual you can do login count order by descending so use the same result with ordering so again a quick eloquent tip the next tip comes from Pushback, who works at Laravel now. It's not a tip, it's more like announcement, but I guess majority of you don't check the Laravel installer new versions, so there is a new thing that you can choose, not only npm by default, but you can choose bun, pnpm, or yarn with just a flag with Laravel new. Thanks to Joe Tannenbaum for this. To use that feature, upgrade your Laravel installer to the latest version. The next tip comes from Punyapal, who is also very active on Twitter, so I do recommend to follow, as well as actually all people mentioned here in this video are worth following if you use Twitter for Laravel content. So this tip is about hashing passwords. So from the early days of Laravel, we use hash make password to, well, hash password. So did you know you don't have to do that necessarily if you have password hashed in your eloquent model? then you can just provide the password as it is as plain text and that password hashed would automatically hash whatever string you pass here also interestingly if you ask ai to generate something like that like password update form or something like that ai is pretty much always using hash make by default because well this is one of the examples that ai is trained on so if you want to use password hashed as casts you should provide that in the guidelines or somewhere in the prompt and side note about ai i'm planning a video about laravel boost new features they released quite a few things in the last month so subscribe to the channel to not miss that video later this week probably but yeah getting back to this tip you don't have to use hash make specifically the next tip comes from wendell and it's about laravel collections did you know about the method called mode so this is the zoomed version where we have where condition plug shipping method which returns the array of shipping methods and then mode will if we get back to the original tweet will auto select the most used shipping method so if we open the official laravel docs and there's an example here for example you have collection from those four items and mode foo will return 10 because it's repeated twice but also if there's a tie then it would return the array of elements so if you have a tie if we get back to the example by wendell if we have a tie then we take only the first method in this example and for the context i'm guessing that shipping method in this case is enum so you have standard value or value from methods zero 
The next tip comes from Liam, a repeating guest in this video. Did you know that you can set in the config app file of your Laravel application, you can set app editor, and if you have an exception on your page, you can click on that exception in your browser, and it would automatically open the specific file in your preferred IDE for you. I haven't tried with all of them, but Liam reports that it works with PHP Storm, VS Code, and Cursor as it is a VS Code fork. So probably it works with other VS Code forks as well. The next tip comes from Punyapal, a repeating guest here again. So I see, by the way, quite a few people repeating guests here who are very active at posting tips on Laravel and PHP. I would count roughly 10 or so people who do that pretty actively. So anyway, this tip from Punyapal is about, he calls it one-time values without a DB column. And this is the zoomed in example. So sometimes you need some value, for example, for 10 minutes. You can use cache for that. Cache put, put the token for 10 minutes. If it's within 10 minutes, you can do cache get and then perform some more operations depending on whether the cache is still active. But basically the idea here, this is just one example, the idea here that you don't always need a database column or table sometimes for temporary things there may be temporary solutions like session, for example, or in this case, cache. And finally, I told you that Martin will be back in this video, five lesser known eloquent tips. So I will put the link to this tweet and all other tweets mentioned in this video in the description below. But for example, let's scroll a few of those tips. So did you know about where belongs to instead of doing where user ID with ID value? So this is tip number one. Then tip number two, invisible database column from MySQL 8, which is one of the protection mechanism for passwords, tokens, or payment related information. And let's do one more, default attribute values. Did you know that you can specify default attribute values not only in migrations or in the logic like in controller, but directly in the model attributes array, you default to draft. And if you don't specify the value while creating new model, it would default to that value you specified. So yeah, what do you think about this series? Have you learned anything new? What is your favorite of this month series? And I will keep doing that monthly recap on tips that I notice on Twitter and maybe elsewhere. So subscribe to the channel to get those videos and not miss any of them. So the next collection of tips for November will be in the first days of December. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.